the technological engine. Behind such prodigious economic facts lies that great growling energy of change, technology. This is not to say that technology is the only source of change in society. Social upheavals can be touched off by a change in the chemical composition of the atmosphere, by alterations in climate, by changes in fertility and many other factors. Yet technology is indisputably a major force behind the accelerative thrust. To most people, the term technology conjures up images of smoky steel mills or clanking machines. Perhaps the classic symbol of technology is still the assembly line created by Henry Ford half a century ago and made into a potent social icon by Charlie Chaplin in modern times. This symbol, however, has always been inadequate, indeed misleading, for technology has always been more than factories and machines. The invention of the horse collar in the Middle Ages led to major changes in agricultural methods and was as much a technologi technological advance as the invention of the Bessemer furnace centuries later. Moreover, technology includes techniques as well as the machines that may or may not be necessary to apply them. It includes ways to make chemical reactions occurs, occur, Ways to breed fish, plant forests, light theatres, count votes or teach history. The old symbols of technology are even more misleading today. When the most advanced technological processes are carried out far, far from assembly lines or open hearths. Indeed, in electronics, in space technology, in most of the new industries, relative science and clean surroundings are characteristic, even sometimes essential. And the assembly line, the organisation of armies of men to carry out simple repetitive functions, is an anachronism. It is time for our symbols of technology to change, to catch up with the quickening changes in technology itself. This acceleration is frequently dramatised by a thumbnail account of the progress in transportation, it has been pointed out, for example, that in 6000 BC, the fastest transportation available to man over long distances was the camel caravan, averaging eight miles per hour. It was not until about 1600 BC, when the chariot was invented, that the maximum speed was raised to roughly 20 miles per hour. So impressive was this invention, so difficult was it to exceed this speed limit that nearly three and a half thousand years later, when the first mail coach began operating in England in 1784, it averaged a mere 10 miles per hour. The first steam locomotive introduced in 1825 could muster a top speed of only 13 miles per hour and the great sailing ships of the time laboured along at less than half that speed. It was probably not until the 1880s that man, with the help of a more advanced steam locomotive, managed to reach a speed of 100 miles per hour. It took the human race millions of years to attain that record. It took only 58 years, however, to quadruple that limit, so that by 1938, airborne man was cracking the 400 mile per hour line. It took a mere 20-year flick of time to double the limit again, and by the 1960s, rocket planes approached speeds of 4,800 miles per hour and men in space capsules were circling the Earth at 18,000 miles per hour. Plotted on a graph, the line representing progress in the past generation would leap vertically off the page. Whether we examine distances travelled, altitudes reached, minerals mined or explosive power harnessed, the same accelerative trend is obvious. The pattern here and in a thousand other statistical series is absolutely clear and unmistakable. Millennia or centuries go by and then, in our own times, a sudden bursting of the limits, a fantastic spurt forward. The reason for this is that technology feeds on itself. Technological technology makes more technology possible, as we can see if we look for a moment at the process of innovation. Technological innovation consists of, consists of three stages linked together into a self-reinforcing cycle. First, there is the creation, feasible idea. Second, its practical application. 
third, its diffusion through society. The process is complete, the loop closed, when the diffusion of technology embodying the new idea in turn helps generate new creative ideas. Today, there is evidence that the time between each of the steps in this cycle has been shortened. Thus, it is not merely true, as frequently noted, that 90% of all the scientists who ever lived are now alive, and that new scientific discoveries are being made every day. These new ideas are put to work much more quickly than ever before. The time between original concept and practical use has been radically reduced. This is a striking difference between ourselves and our ancestors. Apollonius of Perga discovered conic sections, but it was 2,000 years before they were applied to engineering problems. It was literally centuries between the time Paracelsus discovered the ether, that ether could be used as an anaesthetic, and the time it began to be used for that purpose. Even in more recent times, the same pattern of delay was present. In 1836, a machine was invented that mowed, threshed, tied straw into sheaves and poured grain into sacks. This machine was itself based on technology at least 20 years old at the time, yet it was not until a century later, in the 1930s, that such a combine was actually marketed. The first English patent for a typewriter was issued in 1714, but a century and a half elapsed before typewriters became commercially available. A full century passed between the time Nicholas Appert discovered how to can food and the time canning became important in the food industry. Today, such delays between idea and application are almost unthinkable. It is not that we are more eager or less lazy than our ancestors, but we have, with the passage of time, invented all sorts of social devices to hasten the process. Thus we find that the time between the first and second stages of the innovative cycle, between idea and application, has been cut radically. Frank Lynn, for example, in studying 20 major innovations such as frozen foods, antibiotics, integrated circuits and synthetic leather, found that since the beginning of this century more than 60% has been slashed from the average time needed for a major scientific discovery to, the translate, to be translated into a useful technological form. Today, a vast and growing research and development industry is consciously working to reduce the lag still further. But if it takes less time to bring a new idea to the marketplace, it also takes less time for it to, be, for it to sweep through the society. Thus, the interval between the second and third stages of the cycle, between application and diffusion, has likewise been sliced and the pace of diffusion is rising with astonishing speed. This is borne out by the history of several familiar household appliances. Robert B. Young at the Stanford Research in Institute has studied the span of time between the first commercial appearance of a new electrical appliance and the time the industry manufacturing it reaches peak production of the item. Young found that for a group of appliances introduced in the United States before 1920, including the vacuum cleaner, the electric range and the refrigerator, the average span between introduction and peak production was 34 years. But for a group that appeared in the 1939-59 to 59 period, including the electric frying pan, television and washer-dryer combination, the span was only eight years. The lag had shrunk by more than 76%. The post-war group, Young declared, demonstrated vividly the rapidly accelerating nature of the modern cycle. The stepped-up pace of invention, exploitation and diffusion, in turn, accelerates the whole cycle still further, for new machines or techniques are not merely a product but a source of fresh creative ideas. Each new machine or technique, in a sense, changes all existing machines and techniques by permitting us to put them together into new combinations. By permitting us to put them together into new combinations. The number of possible combinations rises exponentially as the number of new machines or techniques rises arithmetically. Indeed, each new combination may itself be regarded as a new super machine. The computer, for example, made possible a sophisticated space effort 
linked with sensing devices, communication equipment and power sources, the computer became part of a configuration that in aggregate forms a new single supermachine, a machine for reaching into and probing outer space. But m for machines or techniques to be combined in new ways, they have to be altered, adapted, refined or otherwise changed so that the very effort to integrate machines into supermachines compels us to make still further technological innovations. It is vital to understand, moreover, that technological innovation does not merely combine and recombine machines and techniques. Important new machines do more than suggest or compel changes in other machines. They suggest novel solutions to social, philosophical, even personal problems. They alter man's total intellectual environment, the way he thinks and looks at the world. We all learn from our environment, scanning it constantly, though perhaps unconsciously, for models to emulate. These models are not only other people, they are increasingly machines. By their presence we are subtly conditioned to think along certain lines. It has been observed, for example, that the clock came along after the Newtonian image of a world as a great clock-like mechanism, a philosophical notion that has had the utmost impact on man's intellectual development. Implied in this image of the cosmos as a great clock were ideas about cause and effect and about the importance of external as against internal stimuli that shape that the everyday behaviour of all of us today. The clock also effect affected our conception of time so that the idea that a day is divided into 24 equal segments of 60 minutes each has become almost literally a part of us. Recently, the computer has touched off a storm of fresh ideas about man as an inter interacting part of larger systems, about his physiology, the way he learns, the way he remembers, the way he makes decisions. Virtually every intellectual discipline, from political science to family psychology, has been hit by a wave of imaginative hypotheses triggered by the, by the invention and diffusion of the computer, and its full impact has not yet struck. And so the innovative cycle feeding on itself speeds up. If technology, however, is to be regarded as a great engine, a mighty accelerator, then knowledge must be regarded as its fuel, and we thus come to the crux of the accelerative process in society, for the engine is being fed a richer and richer fuel, every day.